Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel and this will be a tutorial from the Department of Pediatrics entitled Congenital Muscular Torticollis. So let's begin. Congenital torticollis is the persistent shortening of the sternocleidomastoid muscle caused by its underdevelopment or birth trauma. It is characterized by a head tilting towards the diseased side, with the face turning to healthy side and an elevated position of the upper arm due to contraction of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Congenital muscular torticollis ranks as third place after hip dislocation and club foot on the list of musculoskeletal system diseases in the pediatric hospitals. According to etiology, congenital torticollis is a result of congenital malformation of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and birth injuries during breech presentation or forceps delivery during fetal extraction. Extraction. On histological studies of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, it is revealed that these underdeveloped muscle fibers that were replaced by connective muscle tissues. Briefly on uh, etiopathogenesis, um, the contracture of the sternocleidomastoid muscle happens in such a way that if there's damage during, the ch during childbirth they, and there's a formation of the hematoma, it is followed up by subsequent scarring, which then leads to the contracture. And on the clinical picture, there's thickening and compaction of the upper, middle, or even the lower third of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The child is seen to tilt his head due to the weakening tension in the same muscle. There is shortening of the neck, restricted head mobility. Um, in the first month of life, the muscle is dense and thickened. The muscle thereafter looks like connective tissue and the muscle is stunted. The child is seen to have facial and skull asymmetry. The ear lobes are not on the same level in what is known as positive symptom felca. And there is also scoliosis at varying degrees with a palpable mass. Diagnosis is based on clinical data, X-ray of segment C1 and C2, as well as an ultrasound of the muscle for differential diagnosis of fibrosis. And now differential diagnosis. Firstly, I'll talk about neurogenic forms of torticollis, which occur in spastic paralysis of cervical muscles due to encephalitis, rather as a complication of encephalitis. There is tonic and clonic convulsions of the cervical muscle, spastic torticollis, and in polio. This uh, type of torticollis is characterized by flaccid paralysis of the neck muscle. The second uh, differential diagnosis that is important is the dermato derma dermatogenic forms of torticollis, which happen um, as a result of extensive scarring after injury to deep tissues of the neck. Desmogenic forms of torticollis on differential diagnosis are as a result of lymphadenitis and phlegmon of the neck. Reflex torticollis, um, another differential diagnosis, occurs in inflammatory processes of the middle ear and the parotid gland, and so on. Finally, on my list is arthrogenic forms, for example, in Klebel Field syndrome, um, whereby there's an ana where there's an ana anomaly in the development of cervical vertebrae, giving a wedge-shaped cervical vertebrae. So as far as treatment, there's non-operative treatment as well as operative treatment. So in non-operative treatment, the caregiver should immediately begin corrective gymnastics done three to four times a day for 10 minutes. The muscle should be stretched. Ultra-high frequency therapy should be initiated from the sixth to the eighth week, as well as potassium iodide electrophoresis for 30 seconds with repetitions after four to five months. Should also be initiated in the sixth to the eighth week. The caregiver should provide massages on the face and the neck, and the child should be made to wear a collar. So, as far as surgical treatments, the indications are um, if the non-operative treatment is inefficient by the second year of life, definitely make a plan for surgery. 
if there's persistence to an ocleidomastoid contracture, limiting head movement, if there's persistence to an ocleidomastoid muscle contracture accompanied by progressive facial hemihypoplasia, and finally, if the torticollis in children, um, if the children are older than 12 months, then surgery should be considered as an option. So briefly to speak on surgery, the operation is carried out by a transverse dissection of the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the sternum pedicle and often with its resection. It is followed up by immobilization for five to six weeks and up to the six months, the patient is required to wear a brace and regular exercise therapy. So thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your support. If you're new to this channel, kindly subscribe, leave me a comment and hit the like button. Until the next tutorial, see you then.